To kick off the India Today conclave's deep dive into Afghanistan, it is my privilege to welcome Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, former CEO of the erstwhile Afghan government and former chairman of the High Council of Reconciliation. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Abdullah. Let's begin by asking you this question. Why didn't you flee Kabul and join the rebel forces as you did the first time or go into hiding uh, like President Ghani did in, in, to the UAE? I have been, with, been our with our people, people throughout. throughout. And, and uh, 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 this, time this time around, around uh, uh, it wasn't it supposed, was supposed to be like to this. Be like this. Uh, the, issue the issue was, was that there was supposed, was supposed to be a meeting in Doha. Doha. Taliban, Taliban were not supposed to, enter, to, to have entered Kabul. Uh, and then, uh, as a result of some negotiations, the transition would have taken place to a new uh, regime, uh, and hopefully with a power-sharing element in it. Uh, and then, uh, uh, with, the, with, the, with the Ghani escaping, with the Ghani leaving the country, of course, uh, the situation turned into a chaotic situation. So, I mean, I just want to follow up on that question. You are saying that probably President Ghani was responsible for the collapse, or the rapid collapse of the democratic forces in Afghanistan. But didn't your own government betray the people of Afghanistan? Wouldn't you blame your own government first? And secondly, would you blame the Americans for betraying Afghanistan? I would say that there were so many flaws uh, in our own system, there is no doubt about it. Uh, bad elections, one after another. Uh, Ghani uh, not trusting the people uh, and the sense of mistrust between him and all the leaders in the country, uh, which was him to be blamed for it in most parts. Uh, corruption, the distance between the people and the government. Uh, those, were, those were some of the factors. Uh, but uh, at the same time, when the United States signed a deal with the Taliban uh, earlier, the Doha Agreement, the uh, 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 United States, States had given, given uh, its uh, uh, promise uh, to the Taliban that they will leave on a certain date. Uh, and that in itself uh, led to the demoralization of our forces, to the mistrust of the people, to the, uh, to the, to the situation in events which took place uh, in the past few months. Eventually, there should have been a negotiated settlement. I believe in it, and I still believe in it, uh, that uh, that should have been the path. Uh, but uh, but uh, uh, like uh, doing it the way that our American friends did it, uh, in spite of a lot of uh, opposition from within uh, the U.S. administration, as well as the uh, across the parties, uh, uh, unconditional withdrawal, uh, without uh, uh, without achieving peace between both sides, uh, that of course uh, was an element which was very evident uh, right from February 2020. Now, uh, Dr. Abdullah, we saw the ISI chief uh, uh, visit Kabul soon after the Taliban victory. So, what role did Pakistan and the ISI play in the Taliban's return to power? Has the Haqqani network, which Pakistan backs, gain complete dominance in the new Taliban regime? Uh, I would say that the, the role of uh, different countries, uh, uh, but the point is that uh, there is the Taliban, they call them the Islamic Emirate, uh, and there are uh, different leaders within. At the moment, uh, there is a sort of uh, role for every, uh, every, every, every group in the system. Uh, yes, uh, some group may be uh, dominating more, uh, and uh, they had some discussions at the beginning uh, before uh, getting to an agreement on a formation of an interim government, uh, but now they are working together. But are you concerned about Pakistan's deep involvement? There is uh, every evidence that Pakistan is playing a major role uh, with the new Taliban regime. Uh, they, of course, uh, Taliban's... Uh, uh, closest relations is, is with Pakistan. Uh, uh, it has been like this uh, in the past uh, three decades. Uh, but more important uh, is that uh, the path that Taliban are taking. Uh, would they continue the same way as they, they have done so far, uh, where have not been able to address the concerns of the people, uh, and the people are fleeing the country? Uh, they have legitimate concerns. Uh, about their future, 
hear about the uh, security in Afghanistan, the presence of other terrorist organizations like Daesh and other groups in the country, which is part of the security concerns about the future of the political future of the country with this will be a pluralistic society with different ideas competing with one another in a peaceful and civil manner uh, within within a within an overall framework uh, what will be the uh, um, role of women in the society uh, the education for girls higher education um, freedom of speech and certain other freedoms all of these are, are serious concerns for the people and and also uh, countries of the region have uh, their own issues. Uh, so the uh, the way ahead, uh, the steps forward, or, or the the decisions made by the Taliban uh, uh, will will define uh, the future of uh, Afghanistan. If it is unstable Afghanistan, it will not help any country, including Pakistan. And if the people are not unified, if they don't see that they are part of the future of the country, uh, and they, if they are fleeing the country because of the concerns that they have, um, that will not be a suitable situation for anybody. Now, if you see what's happened in the formation of the government, there is not a woman in the cabinet. Minorities have been represented very meagerly. Uh, this looks like the Taliban of uh, the past, Taliban 1.0 and not 2.0. Do you see any change? What is your advice to the Taliban government uh, in terms of plurali plurality and also in ensuring that they meet the people's needs? No, our views are very, very clear uh, in this country. Uh, not only the right of edu education, but also uh, the right of uh, political participation uh, uh, and uh, participating in the development of the country uh, in working together with their uh, 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 countrymen uh, in order to take Afghanistan from where it is to where it ought to be uh, without the role of women uh, that can those cannot be that cannot be materialized uh, that's very obvious and uh, also in our conversation uh, with uh, some of the leaders of Taliban which we had met in the earlier days uh, we have shared our views with them what is the, uh, uh, Dr. Abdullah, you're in Kabul. What is the situation there in your country? Is it troubled? Is there a huma uh, humanitarian crisis? Are people suffering? We don't get too much information here, uh, out here. What is your, uh, you know, what is your uh, views on this? Uh, the humanitarian situation is the most uh, serious one uh, throughout the country. It was there, there earlier as well because of the continuation of the war. Uh, but with the recent developments, it has ex exacerbated many folds because uh, some groups have left uh, humanitarian organizations are not functioning in the same way that you, they used to do, though the UN and UN organization, uh, uh, institu different institutions, they are trying to uh, work it out. Uh, so the country is uh, in need of humanitarian uh, assistances, um, economy, uh, is not moving at this stage. Uh, the banking system uh, are working, but very slowly. Uh, and uh, you know, also, uh, there are uh, attacks by Daesh in different parts of the country. This morning in a mosque uh, in Kunduz, uh, too many people were killed, unfortunately, uh, during, uh, during, during prayers uh, around noon. And uh, so this is, uh, uh, there is the Daesh attacks, uh, so the uh, still uh, the people uh, are not being assured uh, about uh, the path, the way forward. Uh, that's the main thing. There is a there, there is an aura of uh, uncertainty. Uh, that's what worries the people. You had always regarded India as a friend of Afghanistan. What is the role that India can play in the months ahead? Do you think we should resume diplomatic ties with Afghanistan and, uh, you know, at some point even recognize the government? What would be your benchmarks for India to recognize uh, the, the new regime that's there? Uh, I think like most other countries, uh, India is also uh, making uh, its mind about, uh, about uh, what to do, making up its mind about uh, what to do. Uh, 
but uh, mm, of course, uh, anything in support in terms of uh, humanitarian assistance will be helpful to the people of Afghanistan. Uh, sort of engagement uh, is uh, inevitable uh, because without it, nothing could be done. Uh, but uh, also, uh, uh, working with the rest of the neighboring countries of Afghanistan and in, in, in countries of the region uh, in order to have a, a collective uh, sort of uh, uh, unified position uh, with coherent uh, messages uh, to the people of Afghanistan that support for the people will continue, but uh, for the countries in order to be able to move forward in providing those supports, of course, there are requirements uh, which, uh, which have to be met. Uh, so the, uh, I'm encouraging humanitarian assistance to the people of Afghanistan at this moment. Now, apart from that, if you had to give some benchmarks that nations like India should, uh, you know, uh, put so that if we have to either resume diplomatic ties or recognize the government at some point, uh, we don't know when, uh, what would, in your opinion, be the five or six major things the current regime should do so that the world is assured that they are on the right track and not going back to their bad old ways? Uh, I think there, there are uh, uh, issues which uh, most of the countries have the same concerns about. Uh, first, uh, uh, about the uh, government and the type of government, uh, though it is, uh, it is uh, interim at this moment, so the future government, will it be inclusive? Uh, inclusive, I mentioned. Uh, about dimensions of it. Uh, so uh, that, that's, I think that's one, one thing. Uh, and then also uh, different countries have different concerns uh, about, uh, about, uh, uh, about the security situation in Afghanistan. Uh, those are, those are if, if the country's concern is of course uh, different, for example, uh, Russia uh, is concerned about the groups which are from Central Asian, which were from Central Asian republics. Uh, in, we're here in Afghanistan. Uh, Chinese have the same concerns. India has its own concerns. Uh, so addressing those security concerns which are uh, relevant to different countries will be some of the things that uh, other countries are also expecting uh, uh, the current uh, rulers of Afghanistan to deliver on. And then, of course, uh, 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 certain certain criteria which uh, which uh, state uh, statehoodness uh, statehood or or or, or, or uh, issues of uh, uh, governance uh, in also uh, people's uh, people's uh, participation in certain rights of the people including the rights of the right of uh, minorities uh, are are the things that uh, most countries have concerns about it and I think that also applies to applies to India. Now, Dr. Abdullah, you had mentioned the security situation that's there and how important it is for the various countries uh, to know that uh, uh, they're not going to unleash terror networks on them. India has this particular concern. Uh, this has happened in the past. What is your sense? Will the new Taliban regime able to control the terrorist organizations that are aligned with it, that are inimical to India? And do you see them actually, I mean, should we in some senses expect uh, the worst and prepare for that? Do you think they will try and attack, uh, you know, uh, carry out terror, terrorist attacks on, in India? I think the, the starting point will be to engage with them uh, and to raise those concerns directly. Uh, nobody can assure any country of, uh, of a situation uh, which is not in control. So the, I think uh, a direct engagement uh, with them uh, and raising uh, those concerns with them uh, will be the way the way forward or, or the starting point. What is your sense of the government? Now you watch them uh, for a couple of months. Are they on the right track? Do you see uh, them reigning in all these terror groups? Is there hope? Are you optimistic? Do you speak to them? Uh, we are we are in contact with them. Uh, they are also busy. Uh, dealing with those issues because earlier they were not in the position of uh, being uh, in charge. Uh, they were fighting against the government. And now it's a different responsibility. Uh, and uh, uh, you're learning, I think, uh, that it is different from from their uh, earlier situation. Uh, if, the, if the people don't see 
uh, the signs of it, improvement, uh, that will lead to further uh, uh, challenges. Uh, so the uh, in, and also it's a situation where the people want to uh, want to see things in beats uh, rather than in words. Uh, so this will be uh, the challenge for them at the moment. Uh, yes, it's the early weeks. Uh, it's only uh, two months from the uh, almost two months from the from the uh, fall of Kabul. Uh, but uh, uh, but still, uh, the pressing issues uh, are there as far as the expectations of the people are concerned. Now, now China has enlarged its footprint in Afghanistan. Uh, what are the pluses and minuses of having uh, China as a big brother? Can the Taliban regime survive solely on China and Pakistan support? You, if you recall, in the first regime, they had only three countries supporting it. Uh, like uh, just a few weeks ago, I met with the representatives of uh, special envoys of China, Russia, and Pakistan. Uh, we met together with former President Karzai uh, here. Uh, more or less, they also have the same expectations, more or less, and and the same concerns. Uh, and uh, their tone might be might be different. Uh, their expectations might be different, uh, but uh, some of the challenges are the same. Okay, I, I want to also come to uh, an area that, uh, uh, you know, we've, we've uh, seen a lot of the resistance uh, collapsing in, uh, in Afghanistan against the, the Taliban regime. Of course, the Panjshir resistance continues, if not in Panjshir, but at least in neighboring countries. Uh, do you see uh, the Panjshir Valley resistance staging a fight back, or do you think, or do you expect a reconciliation process? Uh, the uh, two things I, I need to uh, refer to, uh, like, uh, uh, first I come to Panjshir. Uh, when there was, uh, uh, the fighting was about to start, prior to that, uh, there were some contacts uh, between Kabul and Panjshir, and there were some uh, efforts in order to av avoid fighting. Uh, I don't go into, into those details of it. Uh, the, uh, but it, it didn't it didn't work unfortunately. Uh, and fighting took did take place uh, took place in Panjshir, uh, and there have been a lot of consequences. Uh, uh, as a former uh, chair of the reconciliation, uh, I, I always believe in negotiations. First, uh, Afghanistan has been has been Afghanistan has been in. In war, at war, uh, in the past 40, 42 years, uh, and the people have paid a very high price. Uh, the uh, for me, uh, the priority should have been given to should have been given to the talks in negotiations uh, rather than fighting. But today, of course, it's, uh, it's a, the situation is as it is. Now. Uh you don't fear for your life in Kabul, do you? I mean, in the last time you were a refugee, in some senses in Tajikistan, where we met, uh, you're outside your country, but this time you're here. Uh, what is the role you see for yourself uh, in this? And as I said, your audio was not very good at that time. Why didn't you flee the country and join the resistance movement or go into hiding as Dr. Ghani did? I mean, Ashraf, Ashraf Ghani did, the former president did. Uh, going with Ashraf Ghani and uh, fleeing with Ashraf Ghani and joining a national traitor uh, for his, uh, uh, during his uh, last day in Kabul uh, would, be, would have been the last thing that I would do in my life. Uh, so staying in Kabul was a deliberate decision. It wasn't based on the deal or an understanding with the Taliban, never like that. And then, of course, uh, being with the people which had, uh, uh, which had uh, supported us, uh, which, uh, which, has which had respected us as leaders. And then in the, in, the, in the most difficult day of their life, perhaps in the past uh, four decades, leaving them alone uh, was, uh, was something that I thought that I shouldn't do it. Uh, and uh, I decided to stay. Uh, there wasn't any assurance or, or, or any certainty uh, on what would happen, uh, but I don't regret staying here. Today I'm staying here as a citizen of the country, 
uh, and without it, without a role. And I don't expect any role uh, in any system. Nobody has offered. But more than that is that uh, this was, that was not based on me expecting something. Uh, here, uh, in staying in Kabul, just to be with the people. And uh, today also, uh, my residence uh, is at least uh, is, is an address uh, for, for the people. Uh, but I know what's the situation in the country uh, and uh, the uh, what is going on uh, in the country. I'm in contact with uh, uh, Afghan uh, friends and partners uh, outside Afghanistan. Uh, that's my current, that is my, my, my current role. You never feared for your life. I mean, one of your former presidents was hung, if you recall, uh, from the lamppost in Kabul. Did you ever face danger of that kind? Uh, you, you referred to uh, earlier situation that uh, when we met in Tajikistan, uh, I was passing through Tajikistan at that time. I had never been a refugee except for the earlier years of my life, my, my, my struggle uh, in the 80s, which for a year and a half, I was a refugee in Pakistan before returning back uh, to Afghanistan and joining the resistance against the Soviets. Uh, for the rest of my life, I've been, I've been in Afghanistan throughout uh, under difficult conditions and circumstances. Uh, the risk was very imminent, uh, but I thought that uh, uh, joining uh, the national traitor Ghani uh, which was a cause of the, uh, the, the problem and in, in, in one of the main causes of the, uh, of the challenges that Afghan people are facing today, uh, that, was not, uh, that was not a choice for me. Uh, Dr. Abdullah, we're just about run out of time. Final question from you. Are you hopeful of the situation in Afghanistan? And if so, why? And if not, why not? Uh, uh, no, the, 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 the issue is that I can see the challenges. I'm sorry? Continue to be the same. Uh, 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 one cannot be optimistic. Uh, but I have, uh, I have uh, uh, lived with optimism throughout my life. Uh, and uh, I can see the overwhelming challenges. But still, there are opportunities. Uh, could we seize it? Uh, could it materialize? Uh, the time will the time will say. I, I can see the challenges. Um, there are opportunities as well. Can we seize as a nation, Afghan nation? Can see? Can we capitalize on those opportunities? Only time can tell. Dr. Abdullah, there's just news flowing in that 50 people have been killed in Afghanistan. What is your reaction to that uh, news in an attack? There, there, was, there, was, uh, there, there was an, was attack, an attack, on, attack on a mosque, on a mosque. if that's, that's what you're referring to. to. Yes. Dozens of people have been killed and injured, yes. unfortunately. Uh, that's the tragedy of the Afghan people. I mentioned about the security challenges and uh, the challenges that the people are faced with. Uh, my condolences to those uh, families who have lost their loved ones. Uh, and that's the, the situation that we want to see an end to it. Uh, and, uh, um, so they, uh, mm, this is part of the security um, uh, issues uh, that, uh, that uh, the country is faced with. Well, Dr. Abdullah, I know you live in a very troubled country in a very troubled time. And getting Afghanistan right is critical, uh, not just for the world, but for humanity itself uh, on this, particularly for India. The concerns are very high in terms of security and their ability to control the various terrorist networks and not turn them on us. Uh, I wish you all safety and health uh, in, uh, in Kabul and look forward to interacting with you again. And thank you very much for coming to the India Today Conclave. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give Dr. Abdullah a very warm round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. 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 Thank you.